All right, now this exercise will be about using ANSYS to simulate the flow in the axial turbine stage. All right, so we will uh, split this uh, session into a few uh, sections. So the first one, we'll talk about the introduction and also the problem that we need to solve and then how we prepare the working directory. We will simulate the stage with the steady states frozen roto model. And also we will simulate the stage with a transient roto stator model. While for the live monitoring uh, of the solution uh, will not be part of uh, uh, the demonstration, right? All right. Now let's look at the problem uh, description. So as you can know, as you can see that from uh, the slides here, uh, we are looking at a turbine uh, process that consists of a roto, a roto and a stator. So what I mean by roto and stator? So roto is a rotational part, while stator is a part that is not moving, and uh, it consists of a few components we call hub, strut, and as you can see, the flow is flowing from the left and going to the right. Right, the flow is coming in from the left going to the right. And the rotation of axis here, as you can see from the diagram, uh, this rotation axis is along Z axis. Yeah? As you can see from the axis of rotation and you compare to the uh, uh, reference axis over here, uh, this line, dotted line is uh, Z axis. So, okay. And the stage con contain 60 stator blade and 113 roto blades. So you're revising, you're, you will be receiving uh, a mesh file uh, on stator and roto file. Okay. The following figures show approximately half of the full geometry. So it's about half of the uh, uh, devices. And the inflow and outflow label uh, location uh, as shown. And the rest you can read from here. So we try to uh, model uh, the geometry it consists of a single stator blade passage and a two roto blade passage. Uh, this is an approximation to a full geometry since the ratio of the roto blade and stator uh, will be close to two to one. Yeah? And in the stator blade passage, a six degree section has been modeled. So it means that um, we take, because in stator, in here, in stator stage that the part, if you look at the circle, the full circle contains of uh, 60 blade for the stator component. So if you take 360 divided by 60, you're gonna get six degree per section. So it means from one blade to another blade on a stator will be six degree. While for the roto blade means the rotational part of the roto, the roto bit passage will be 6.4 degree. Okay, if you take uh, 360 divided by 113 and times 2, why times 2? Because we are having a two roto blade passage, means uh, we have, uh, as you can see here, we have a two, uh, two roto bit passage uh, compared to the stator. Okay, meaning if if you see diagram here, you have two rows of a gray color uh, component. One is a stator. So you can imagine this one is a outer ring of a circle. Uh, means stator, this, this do not move, all right? This, all these blade do not move on the left-hand side uh, row of the blade here. However, the right-hand side, uh, the, the blade on the roto component you can see uh, the left and right. So the right row here is going to turn. So it means that uh, stator you have 60, while the roto six, uh, stator, if you count all the blade here from uh, one circle, right? In one circle, you have a uh, 60 stator blade, means you, you count one, two, three, four until the round circle, you get 60 blade. While for roto, you have one, one, three roto blades. Uh, the ratio will be approximate uh, one to two, uh, one to two. 
Okay, that, that also means that you have a single stator blade and two roto blade passage. Okay, one to two. That's why the, uh, the, when you calculate the angle of the section, you take two times 360 divided by 113 blades. Okay. All right. And the rest you can read, read from the slides attached to the inside the model. So we are going to simulate a quarter of the machine section uh, for this geometry. If you take quarter of this uh, machine section, you're going to produce a pitch change of 1.009. Okay, but you require a, a higher, a larger space to simulate. So we only simulate uh, uh, only one one part of the uh, model here. So that's why um, this example. The, rot the roto blades uh, rotates at Z axis at 325.6 radian per second. So it means you see the two row of plate here, stator do not move. The second row of roto is moving. So the second row of the roto is actually rotating at 523.6 radian per second. Okay. Uh, this is the parameter we set in the program later on. So total pressure will be 0.2 bar. Static pressure will be 0 0.06 bar. Uh, total temperature will be 328.5 Kelvin. And you will be seeing this, uh, you will be importing the mesh file or geometry file into the CFX uh, software later on. So as you can see here, we are having a stator and rotation a roto blade here, one to two. So one stator blade compared to two roto blade, right? As we can see from here, okay. We only simulating one section, uh, one particular passage of the air, okay. And all these are the component uh, name component. For example, stator blade, throughout. Uh, direction of the motion, so you can see the ro uh, roto blade is rotating, going up, right, and the hub here. So on the left hand side, the wall at the left hand side called strut. The wall at the left and uh, right hand side is called hub. Left hand side strut, right hand side hub. Okay, and the rest we can read, read from the slides. Huh? Okay. So before beginning, go and download the, these two files from the Moodle, uh, roto.grd and stator.grtm. Then we're going to start the CFX machine. All right, now, uh, how to start the program? You go to your ANSYS uh, folder on your window 10, and then uh, inside uh, ANSYS R10, you go to CFX here. CFX, click that one. And you open up the CFX uh, interface. Okay. Then you have you'll be seen fall icon on the ribbon here. Double grid, uh, CFX pre, CFX solver manager, and uh, CFT post. So we're going to use uh, CFX pre to set our case here. So go ahead. Uh, okay. Before uh, beginning. Make sure you set your working directory accordingly. So go and choose a folder. Let me create uh, one new folder uh, in on my computer. So let me uh, create a new folder. So let me create a new folder. Uh, maybe um, okay, roto. Maybe roto. Uh, Okay, Excel Roto. Okay, Excel Roto found uh, in in one of your directory on your hard drive, hard, hard disk. So you're going to uh, Excel Roto. Okay, you're going to create new folder. Okay, new folder. Excel Roto. Excel Roto, choose 
So your working directory, all the file later will be transferred to this directory, right? To, to this folder on your computer. So make sure you have uh, enough hard disk to generate the file. So we save our all our files for this exercise in Excel Roto folder. So go ahead and click the CFX pre. Click this one. And it will start the CFX pre engine for you. So here, uh, let's just maximize it and then go file and uh, we will create a new case. So new case. So here, inside new case here, you'll be seeing uh, four main category simulation type here. You're able to generate general simulation, turbo machine, quick setup and library template. We're going to use a turbo machine in this case. So click turbo machine, click OK. So we're going to see, uh, show you uh, this uh, information, just click OK. So this is the interface of CFX uh, for Turbo Machine. So on the left hand side will be all the uh, setting and above here you have a lot of ribbon and button to press and you have a, a window here, a view window. So as you can see, you're seeing a line here and there's a reference axis on the right hand side corner. So this is a rotation axis. As you can see, this is a Z axis, Y axis and X axis. So this line is along Z axis. All right, now we need to tell the computer what, what we uh, need to simulate. So in the basic setting here, uh, no, before that, we need to uh, save a case in our uh, folder. So just save case, meaning we create a case for our uh, software to run the simulation. So make sure you uh, save in the correct folder. And we name this one as uh, Exo Initial. Huh? Exo Initial. And the uh, CFX case file dot CFX. Huh? Then click save. All right. Now, as you can see, the file name is above the screen here, Exo dot. Uh, initial. All right, now to go to basic setting here, tell the computer that we are generating machine type. We are not de generating pump, but we are generating uh, Excel turbine. Okay, Excel turbine. And the type here, analysis type, we are using steady state. So if you expand, you can simulate transient and blade flow. So uh, later we will uh, use a transient simulation. At this stage, we will show you uh, using the steady states uh, simulation. Then after that, you go to the bottom of the screen here, click next. So click next, it will ask you to include the, the component for simulation. So you are seeing a blank here. So you need to add a component. So how to add? Just right click your mouse, right click in the space here and you'll see add component, left click. And you can uh, input there are two components here. One is rotating and stationary. Let's go ahead and create a stationary component and use the name of S1. S1 means stationary part one, uh, and the type is stationary. And then click OK. So you're going to ask you uh, some information about the S1 component that you create. So type is stationary. And we need to import the stator as a stationary part here. So file, you go to your uh, working file folder. That's when you download the the, fold, the file for the stator. So you go ahead and look for uh, GTM. GTM mesh, right? CFX mesh, uh, GTM folder. So go ahead and select stator.gtm. Uh, so this one is available in the Moodle platform. So click this one, click open. So you'll see some file happening to the screen here. So if this one's too small to you, you go to the top of this screen and there's a magnifying glass here. Just click the fit view. Click this one, it will fit your view here. So this is the stator file uh, that you uh, import into the window. Next, we're going to add one more uh, component here. It's a rotation file. So go to the space here, right click, add component. Uh, and we're going to add a rotation uh, component. So create rotation R1. Okay. And click OK. 
So we're going to uh, set for our R1. So type rotating. And we need to tell the uh, computer uh, what file that we are looking at. So go ahead. Uh, uh, our state, our rotating uh, blade is rotating at uh, three five hundred twenty three point six ra uh, radian per second. So go ahead, click the value, change the value to radian per second, and change the value to five to three point six radian per second. And go ahead, import the the uh, roto file. So go to file here. There's a folder. Left click, and go and find your file. Right. So they go to find the grd. Dot grd. Grd cfx uh, uh, task uh, flow file. Dot grd. So import the roto. Dot grd into the folder. Click open. So you can see there's another component added to the window here. So again, click the fit to window just to see the all the things. Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, import the two folder into the uh, screen here. After that, we're going to expand for a rotation component. We're going to expand the passage and alignment here. So go ahead and expand passage and alignment here. So you still remember just now we mentioned that uh, we have a single package, a single passage and a, a two passage for the uh, roto. So we, we need to edit the passage here. So go and edit. So for rotational, there are two, uh, two passage per match. And we need to model two. And then inside the 360 for uh, the roto, we have 113 blades in 360 in one round of circle of the uh, blade here, right? 113. Okay, then we click done. So make sure uh, the rotational part, you do the setting for this one. Okay, then you. Uh, look for the wall configuration. Make sure there is a tip clearance at the strap. Click yes, and also the tip clearance at the hub. Click no. Okay, so this setting configure the slip condition on the wall, uh, such that the strap, uh, the strap, is a uh, counter rotating with the respect to the roto, but the hub is not. Okay, and click next. So. After you click next, you will come to a setting for physics definition. So in this session, we will tell the computer we are using uh, ideal gas in our for our fluid. So you can expand and use other things. So in this case, we are using uh, ideal gas. And inside the model data here, our reference uh, pressure here, we will use uh, 0 0.025 uh, atmosphere. Uh, okay, and then for uh, Turbulence, uh, heat transfer here, we'll use a total energy equation. Uh, turbulence, we'll use a K epsilon. Now, K epsilon is a famous model for uh, simulating turbulence flow. Uh, while for the inflow and outflow boundary templates, we will use uh, mass flow outlets. Okay, we'll use P total uh, inlet mass flow outlet. Select this one. And for the P total here, we will set as zero as our gauge pressure, right? Zero P total. And the temperature, our working temperature is 340 uh, Kelvin. Okay. Make sure the unit is correct. Yeah? 340 Kelvin. And after that, we go to uh, flow direction, normal to boundary. Okay. Normal to boundary. And the outflow here, we choose uh, mass flow per component. We, you can set many things here, but we are looking at component here, mass flow per component. Mass flow rate here will be 0 0.06 kilogram per second for our simulation. Mass flow rate is 0 .00, uh, uh, 0.06 kilogram per second. And for interface here, for interface default type here, 
we need to change to frozen motor because we are simulating a frozen motor model. So we use frozen motor and then uh, click this one to expand the solver parameter. Okay, solver parameter here uh, for evaction scheme, we use high resolution. For convergence control, we will use, we need to change to physical time scale. Okay, now physical time scale here, uh, we will uh, put in 0 0.002 second. Now, how to calculate the physic time scale here? Now, physic time scale here is equal to 1 over omega. Okay, 1 over omega. So, as you can see, um, 1 over omega will be here. So, you in this in the assignment you'll be given the omega value so you need to calculate the omega given in the uh, in the table so you convert one over omega and put use the value for your simulation so in this case we will you will be using uh, 0 0.002 in our physical time scale so this value you need to refer to the table that you chosen okay all right now let's look back to our uh, CFX pre. So make sure the physical time frame you follow your value. Okay, so we are using 0 0.002 second. Yeah. After that, click next. So here you will see interface uh, definition. Uh, interface definition, you don't need to change anything. Just click, uh, for example, interface uh, R1 to R1 periodic is highlighted. R1, S1 is highlighted. Uh, and S1, S1 priority. We have three interface here. You don't need to change anything, just click next. And then uh, the next one, you look at the boundary definition. You, you have six, uh, you have uh, this uh, parameter here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight boundary here. You click each one of it. This one is rotational blade, hub, you can see here, outlet here. Strap here and you can click to see. Yeah? So S1 is a stator blade, stator hub, stator inlet, stator strap here. Okay, so you don't need to change anything at the moment. So just click X. And the final operation, we're going to uh, ask the computer to simulate operation uh, using uh, general mode. Okay, you have a, uh, you can use solver, you can use uh, solver and quick, but we'll use a general mode at this moment. Okay, then click finish. So you have done uh, with setting up the, uh, the operation. Now you can see that uh, you actually having uh, the roto and stator in the window here. So just click fit to window to see the all the things. All right, now we're going to write the CFX over input file. So how to input, uh, how to write the CFX over input file or .def. So you see all the ribbon here. I want you to go to this SM. SM here, small symbol here. Uh, define run, left click. You open up the right solver input file. So make sure you are going to the your, your folder just now, your project folder. Uh, name this file as uh, Excel initial.def. Okay. Excel initial Excel DN.def solver input file. Okay. Then click save. So you will run the file for you. So in this case, um, okay. So in this case, once you save this one, right? Uh, once you save this. Uh, file, uh, you can close your CFX pre already. Okay, you have already saved this all the all the setting just now in the um, uh, Excel initial.df file just now. So this one, the pre window here, you can close it. You ask it whether you want to save. Yes, save and click. Okay, then you go to the uh, CFX over window that opened up just now. So here. Uh, make sure the input file is in the correct folder and you can run either double precision or that one. 
So in this case, you can run a parallel or MPI distributed. So uh, I will just use a zero uh, run model. Okay. Um, okay, then everything's look all right. You can uh, click this one, advanced control here to see other things that you, you want to set. Lah. Okay. So I'm using the serial run mode at this moment. Okay. Then I will click start run. So the computer will take about two to three minutes to run the calculation for you. So as you can see, the available value and the accumulate time step, and there are some output file that you can see here. So you can see the information about iteration, how many iteration run, uh, what are the parameter are uh, calculated. Okay, so this process is going to take uh, two to three minutes depending on the speed of your computer and also the computer specification. So if you have a higher processor, means this process will run faster. All right, so on my computer, uh, it will take about two to three minutes to run. Okay, all right, you can fast forward the video uh, to when it reached the complete for uh, for this calculation. Okay, it will take about two to three minutes to, to run. Okay, but I will still recording uh, this video in the real time so you can uh, know what is happening, what is expected on your computer. Okay, now the computer have stopped. Uh, it's, he had mentioned server run finished normally, so there's no error found in the calculation. So if you can move this window and there is a summary of what had been done by the solver. So um, from here, we will select, we want to see the post uh, process results and we will ask the computer to shut down the uh, CFX server manager for us. Yeah. If you are using standalone mode, huh? then okay. 